Hi guys, Raven here. It is Saturday, February 15th, 2020. You know, I have talked, I got paper here. I've talked about a lawsuit that I was uh, up against. The case was about where the previous apartment that I lived at, there was black mold that was in the apartment complex. Now here in the state of Ohio, it is uh, legal for a tenant to withhold rent when a re uh, request for repairs to be, you know, done. There was black mold in the apartment, which I didn't know before I moved in there. My cousin knew. But I didn't. And, um... So, because of that, he was withholding... Even though I gave him my half of the, the rent, the deal was that, you know, we would split where my rent would be somewhere around 350 every month. But he was withholding the rent because he had made numerous requests to have the black mold in the apartment address. Now my aunt didn't know this before she had me go move in with him. So because had she known she would have never sent me there. Uh, none of this would come about. Well anyway I got as you can see two papers here. They're both, they're both basically the same thing. It's the uh, same wording. Um, it says here, Notice of Voluntary Dismissal. And it reads, Now comes the plaintiff, by and through, undersigned counsel, and hereby gives notice pursuant to to Ohio Rule of Civil Procedure 41A of its voluntary dismissal without prejudice within the action. Respectfully submitted, and it has the, the prosecuting attorney signature. And it says here at the bottom of the paper, Certificate of Service. The undersigned hereby certified he served a true and accurate copy Foregoing the document upon my cousin's name, and it has my name on there as well. By U.S. by regular U.S. mail, postage prepaid on this eleventh day of February, twenty twenty, and again it has the attorney, the prosecuting attorney's signature right there. So it looks like one is the original copy and another is a photostatic copy. I say that because on one, the attorney signature is in blue ink and then this one is in black so it looks like it was Xerox. So what does this mean? Well, I think it means that the case has been thrown out. But what, the way I understood the term without prejudice, meaning that it can, can be brought back up again. But apparently that's not the case. Because I was looking up the legal definition, and it says here, When a case is dismissed, but the plaintiff is allowed to bring a new suit on the same claim within a period of limitation, it is... Dismissal without prejudice. It is a dismissal that does not bar plaintiff from bringing a new suit on the same claim. When a case is dismissed without prejudice, plaintiff is allowed to bring a new suit on the same claim of action. Dismissal without prejudice will be based upon procedural errors it treats as if the lawsuit had never been commenced. 
such dismissal does not relieve plaintiff the duty of complying with the time limit within his her action must be commenced. A dismissal without prejudice is granted in response to a notice of dismissal, stipulations, or a court order. So I'm taking it that my lawsuit, well, the lawsuit against me and my cousin has been dropped. That's the way I'm looking at it. And I hope that's the case. Um, number one, I didn't put the black mold there. I didn't do any damage to that apartment. The black mold was already there before I even moved in. But I didn't know that. So, um, now, this, this, this surprises me not so much on my part, but more on my cousin's part. Because he's lived there for over a year before getting, you know, evicted. But, um, number one, the plaintiff didn't even have vital information of me. She only knew me by my nickname and my last name. She does not know my whole real name, you know, first, middle, and last. Doesn't know my birth date, doesn't know my search security number. So really, you know, since she had, you know, none of this, there's really no way that this, this case shouldn't stand anyway. It's not even been filed because I didn't do any damage to the department to start with. Yeah, I was living there, but... I was only there for a couple months. Well, this place that I'm living at now was being uh, fitted to be handicapped accessible. Now, that everything is basically one floor here in this house, but I do have to take one step down to get into the kitchen dining area. And if I want to go into the bathroom, I have to take one step up to get into the bathroom. But what I mean by handicap accessible, there's bars that are at the doorway that I can hold on to to pull myself up so I can get into this room. Like if I want to pull myself up to get into the living room. Um, I'm not even going to talk about the bedroom because I haven't slept in the bedroom since November. Four months. Three and four, almost four months. So... This paper, I'm happy. You know, I'm, you know, because here I was thinking on March 10th, I was going to have to go to court. But, based on what those letters say, that the case has been dropped. But I don't know if that means that come March 10th, I don't have to show up at court. Do I still have to go? I don't know. I've never been a defendant in a case before. This is all new stuff for me. I've never, you know, been in trouble with the law legally. Um, I don't have a criminal history. You know, if you were to search my name, which I'm not going to give, but if you were to search my name on a uh, people search database. The fact that me and my dad have the same name. Um, my dad has extensive criminal history. His rap sheet dates way back to even before I was even born. Um, over 40 years. And it just seems like my dad can't stay out of trouble. But see, that's the, the thing about people search websites like mylife.com. That site has been the biggest thorn in my side. Um, there's Intellius. I think I'm pronouncing that right. 
uh, people with that there's you know uh, US search as a pot see none of these um, I don't think any of these uh, searches can be 100% accurate it is names of people that are my relatives that I've never heard of before um, it has some mistake. It's probably mistaken me for my dad. My dad, you know, he's got several felonies on his record. But that's for me. I chose not to go down that path of throwing life away in terms of going to jail. I. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I don't go out, you know, steal. I don't do drugs. Uh, I'm not a disturbance to the beast. Um, I don't, you know, go do a destructive things. I basically try to keep to myself. That's what I do. I mean, that's the... That's the standard that I live by. You know, people, I, I, I've seen people have a complete 100% dis disdain, uh, utter complete hatred of police departments. Yeah, there's bad cops out there, but here's my thing about that. If you don't like law enforcement, that's fine. But the best way to avoid having to come into contact with them is to stay out of trouble. It's not that hard. All you got to do is to live your life in an honest way. Make a decent living if you can. I understand it. Uh, not everybody's able to work. Nah, I get that. I'm certainly not, uh, but that's the thing, you know, you gotta stay out of trouble, you won't have to worry about coming across law enforcement. Me, I've, uh, I've come to appreciate uh, our men and women in blue. Uh, uh, some police departments don't have blue uniforms, I get that, but it could be black, could be blue, could be brown could be white you know police departments vary but they're they're still known as uh, the men and women in blue you know they do their best to keep communities safe I've certainly come to appreciate that um, I haven't had to personally call police departments for you know, to bail me out of some kind of trouble that I've been uh, for and some kind of distress in over 20 years. That's a long time. Um, the last time I called the police department. It's not too long ago. But that was because at the time I was thinking that departments, you know, the ones that I was getting sued for, I had lost my key, lost my wallet, couldn't find it. I eventually found them and I called and canceled it, you know, have an officer come to the house. I thought I saw somebody turning in the driveway there. Um, but the last time I made a phone call to a police department for something major was back in 2018. I was in Florida. 
And I couldn't get a hold of my mom, who lives in Maryland. And so what I did was, I called the police department one night. The sheriff's department, I should say. In the town that my mom was living in. And I requested to do a, um, a welfare check. Well, it turns out she was fine, but my sister was not too happy that I did that because her and her boyfriend were doing something that shouldn't have been doing. But, you know what? I don't care. I was calling to check on my mother. I wanted to know what my mother was up to. I wanted to know if she was okay because I hadn't heard from her in several weeks. And so now it's like, I'll be lucky if I hear from my mom once a month. She called me the other day, but she got me while I was sleeping. She told me to go back to sleep. She'll go back later, which she never does. But still, that's that. Anyway, before I ramble on, I wanted to make a, a video about my uh, legal situation. And it appears that um, the case has been dropped. I'm hoping that's what it means. Um, I I think I've read it, but the definition. See, the way I thought that what the Smiths without prejudice meant that you can't bring that single case up ever again. Now, wouldn't that fall under the category of double jeopardy? I mean, it's like being tr tried twice for the same crime. But I guess it doesn't apply in this case because I wasn't declared not guilty in a sense. So, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. But maybe somebody like Berger who sees that and maybe she can answer it. I think it would make a Good video for her to make about you know, people who, you know, put these right here, these papers, I'm keeping them, so that way, uh, just in case, say, so, wait a minute, you know, I got these, why is this being brought up again, so, um, I guess that's all I have to say. Alright, I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.